Welcome to an episode of Behind the Scenes, a weekly program unveiling the biggest political developments in Somali politics. I'm Sudan Mohammed, your host and producer here on Hot the Media. On this week's program, as dozens were killed in Bayou as security forces raided property owned by Mohammed Ibrahim Fergeti used for an HQ for armed militia supported by a so-called opposition group based in Mottisho. What role did the federal government itself play in this dispute? This is the topic on the program today. We hope you find this program very informative. Please like, share, and for similar content, do subscribe to Hot Freddy Media. Also, do subscribe to Hot Freddy Media Group's second channel, known as Hot Freddy TV, where you are currently watching this program, and where you can find other exclusive programs such as the African Weekly Roundup, Mahahe Salam, among others. And last but not least, do follow myself, Sudan Mohammed, Suleiman Hashi, Yasin Abdi, and the wider Hot Freddy Media team on our social media platforms that should appear on the screen any moment. Let's get straight into it. Now, last week, violence broke out in the transitional capital of southwest state Somalia, Baydabo, which saw numerous people killed. Reports indicate that southwest state security forces raided the home of an opposition candidate, Mohamed Ibrahim Fergeti, which resulted in a gun battle between clan militia loyal to the candidate and state government forces. Now, Southwest State's Security Ministry released a short statement outlining the security forces attacked an armed militia known as Southwest Salvation Force, or SWSF, that set up an illegal checkpoint on a main road. The statement asserted that any attempt to disrupt the peace will be dealt with an iron fist. There are reports that the home was being used as a base for clan militia to orchestrate an uprising against the state government, similar to the one seen in Mogadishu last year. Security forces seized a stash of weapons as the residence was also allegedly being used for storing illegal weapons to be used by this clan militia. However, all reports cannot currently be confirmed directly as internet was shut down during security operations and there haven't been exact details released by security forces. Now, this would be followed by another statement released by the Chief of Staff of Southwest State's Presidency in which it was elaborated that some sinister elements decided to create chaos to derail the upcoming Reconciliation Summit planned by Speaker of the Lower House of the Federal Parliament, Sheikh Adam Madobe, as well as the scheduled National Consultative Council meeting, which was uh, started off yesterday. Now, in response to the event, the federal government of Somalia said it regretted the violence and confrontations reported in Beidabo and urged political sides to resolve their differences through dialogue and avoid bloodshed. Now, opposition candidate Mohamed Ibrahim Fergeti described the incident as barbaric, suggesting that the state government had illegally targeted his home that he described as a campaign center. He further accuses the state president of attempting to silence the dissent. Now, many of you are asking, who is Fergeti? Well, Fergeti served as a finance minister of the federal government of Somalia during the first presidential term of Hassan Sheikh Mahmoud between 2015 and 2017 under Premier Sheikh Omar Sharmakim and is a member of the president's party, UPD which demonstrates a clear close relation with Mogadishu, where he is currently based. Now, despite such statements regarding residency and campaign centre, footage emerged online showing armed militia roaming the home and the streets surrounding Fergeti's property, threatening violence against state security forces if their demands were not met. It was just last week when a group of disgruntled soldiers and local officials defected from Southwest State Administration and declared the formation of Southwest Salvation Force to become a physical challenge to the government on behalf of the opposition based in Mogadishu. Now, Beidabo has accused opposition groups in Mogadishu of directly funding this militia to fight security forces and destabilize the region. Now, all confirmed reports indicate that the clan militia set up illegal checkpoints around the property, which resulted in initial confrontation. Now, many have accused, many opponents of the current government in Mogadishu have accused the government of directly funding the opposition group, uh, the opposition group to Southwest State's government in Mogadishu. However, this has not been confirmed and the federal government obviously has not directly responded to these accusations. Now, over in Baydabo, State Information Minister Elias Ali, alongside State Minister for Interior and Deputy Labour Minister, were fired by State President Laftagren. Now, conversely, Minister Ali said that he resigned from his office rather than being fired, stating that he resigned because he was shocked by what was done to his people, quote unquote, and that he was not made aware or informed about the operation. So what is the wider political dispute about? The dispute revolves around two major elements. The 2021 to 2022 elections that took place in Southwest State Somalia in which some politicians claim to have been denied access to participate in the elections of parliamentary seats. The most vocal of these dissidents is former Speaker Jawari. And the second issue is Southwest State Regional Presidential Election which has been disputed by some opposing political camps based in Hamar. Now, President Laftagren was elected president of the Federal 
member state on the night of December 2018, the regional constitution stipulated that a presidential term would last four years with an election to follow. However, the issue was that the presidential term was four years, whereas the parliament and internal government's term was five years, which was politically not the most practical system. This would result in Southwest State's parliament voting to provide an amendment to the constitution to alter the presidential term from four to five years. And in turn, this resulted in the administration having a one-year extension and this is not, and this is the thing, uh, you know, MPs from the regional parliament Southwest State spoke today. They spoke in front of the media today in Baidabo and they clearly stated that the law they passed in 2020 April had nothing to do with the extension of the term of the president, Laftegren. It was actually to do with the harmonization of the presidential term and the parliamentary term. So it's not specifically about Laftegren as an individual, it's about the office and ensuring a practical political system that works for the benefit of Southwest states in general and enables the terms of parliament, government and the president to coincide. Because look, logically, in every democratic federal system and presidency, you will see that all three branches of government, sorry, excluding the judiciary, all the main two branches of government, the legislative branch and the executive branch, both expire at the same time and it just makes the most sense particularly in a federal delicate system like Somalia. Now this has been disputed however and rejected by Laftegren's opposition in Mogadishu who are adamant for elections to be held immediately. Now opposition candidates are arguing that an extension by a sitting parliament is legally not feasible. Indeed, while such an argument may seem plausible at first sight, it's important to understand that under article 132 to 134 of the provisional Somali constitution which Southwest State's constitution, which of course limited in itself, derives from, enables the legislative chamber of parliament, the elected you know, representatives of the public, to amend the constitution, including a term by a two-third majority. Now, this rift between Southwest State's politicians has been brewing under the surface for a year prior to the election of President Hassan Sheikh Mohammed in May of this year. Now, in May 2022, we remember President Laftegren and summoned all MPs and senators representing Southwest State to discuss political events that were unfolding in Mogadishu, including plans to remove him from office by a coalition of Southwest State politicians that had close relations to elements that are based in the capital. Now, speaking to the media at that time, MP and former commander of the custodial corps, Mahad Abdurrahman Erdan said, we know there are meetings behind the Mogadishu and we will defend President Laftegre. So, the biggest question many are asking is what is the role of the federal government in its entirety? Now, President Hassan Sheikh Mahmoud Dasvila Somalia presidency precedes Laftegre as a key ally of former President Farmajo. It is reported that Hassan Sheikh wants an individual that he can work with and will not oppose his government or policies. Now, indeed, Laftegre is a politically vocal figure. The government would release former Al Shraf deputy leader and spokesman Mukhtar Robo, a man that was in direct competition with Laftegre during the 2018 elections before his detention by the Farmajo administration for reasons surrounding terrorism. In fact, Robo would be offered a senior cabinet post in his government. Hassan Sheikh's government, that is, led by Prime Minister Hamza Abdebare, a decision that would send shockwaves in Baydabo. Now, some analysts have argued that Villa Somalia has the intention of replacing Laftegren with Robo in the upcoming elections, as we've begun to see Robo embed himself within the opposition coalition aforementioned, giving a speech during events held for him in Mogadishu and on behalf of the opposition group over the last few months. Now, Robo originates himself from Southwest State, having previously hidden the Bakol Mountain regions alongside his militia of fighters he led following his rift with Al Shirab leadership in the early 2010s before surrendering to the government in 2018. It is reported that the militia is still present in Bakol and it has allegiance to Robo. So, to Laftegaran, the empowerment of Robo is a direct threat to himself and his administration. And in fact, there have been reports that some of the clan fighters that engaged in Southwest State security forces on Friday and Saturday were members of the very militia that defected from Al Shabaab led the Mukhtar Robo that were based in Bakol region of Southwest State. If this is concretely proved by Southwest State administration, that would directly implicate the federal government and its minister in a conflict to derail peace and stability within a federal member state of Somalia. Now, one cannot argue that the federal government was not or could not have been aware of the actions taken by Minister Robo because the minister was willingly appointed by President Hassan Sheikh Mohammed and Prime Minister Barre with full knowledge of his background and intentions. The simple fact that Robo was embedded himself within the Southwest State opposition demonstrates clear allegiance in a political dispute he ought to have been neutral in as a federal minister. We've also seen a major role played by State Minister of Interior, Ilyas Hassan. Now, Mr. Hassan is a member of Himalokaran, 
a party led by Sharif Sheikh Ahmed. Now, Hassan set up the current fake news factory machine at Alada Media, which has been at the forefront of producing inaccurate disinformation to label and categorize the Southwest State Regional Government as a dictatorship while supporting Southwest states. Uh, this, this militia known as WSF, as well as opposition figures, as saviors to save the Southwest state from what it calls tyranny. Now, this is clearly a second federal government minister openly attacking the Southwest state administration and actively supporting opposition in Mogadishu to topple left again. Therefore, one has to ask themselves how much of a role Villa Somalia plays in this political dispute in itself. There's no way Hassan Sheikh does not know that his ministers are engaging in such activities. If you simply look at recent events, upon the arrival of State President Loftegate to Modusho to participate in the NCC summit yesterday, so-called handful of protesters came out against Loftegate in the same manner used by opposition groups last year against Farmajo. A handful of individuals with cards handed to them and paid via money transfers as was exposed by some protesters during the 2021 protests against Farmajo. Now, if you do not believe this, let me ask you one question. One simple question. Why is there no protests in Southwest State? And one cannot simply answer and say, oh, Squid's Force are going to uh, suppress them. It has three regions. Even if Beidabo is difficult, I'm sure if the public in, in the masses were not happy with the Loftegrid administration and the current trajectory it's going in, they would come out in drones and arm themselves. I mean, this is Somalia, for God's sake. We saw this in the capital. We saw this going on in Somaliland recently when, when civilians came out in drones against uh, the, the, the incumbent president there, Musa Bihe. So the reality is that people can come out in drones, but they decided not to. And this simple fact proves that the population as a whole in Southwest State seem to be content with their administration and the system put in place by their parliament that represents them. Now, let's take a closer look at this SWSF militia. Some have compared it to Ibad Badokaran, a clan militia that was based in Mogadishu last year, that was based on clan allegiances and that came following calls of particular presidential candidates, not all, some based off certain sects of society used their influence to capitalize on you know, their clans or whatever they originate from. So it seems as though all actions taken so far are identical in replication of the fake news and espionage that took place in Mogadishu to weaken or topple the government, which ultimately failed, but did force Farmaja to hand over power to Prime Minister Roble. Now, it's clear that opposition candidates in Southwest State are attempted to utilize the same methodology to top the left wing government. For instance, we've seen the creation of a fake news media outlet initially created under the pretext of providing news to my speakers, only to be reformed to become a disinformation factory. Number two, we then saw the formation of a joint opposition group representing a particular group of individuals which accused the government of illegitimacy using flawed and inaccurate legal arguments intertwined with clan politics. Number three, we then saw the formation of Southwest State uh, Militia, which has been arming clan militia to fight the government while accusing the government of oppressing dissent. And finally, more regular press conferences from Muktisho by these rogue figures calling on the international community to intervene, enabling for meddling. Now, Speaker Adam Madobe has travelled across Southwest. He went Hodor, he went Beidabo, he went to a few towns and he organised a reconciliation summit now supported by State President Loftegren following his speech last week, set for January. Now, this can be the only hope that could end the political tension in Beidabo and Southwest. But it seems as though the tension mainly remains from Mogadishu. It seems as though the political pressure is irradiating or emanating from Hamar. It doesn't seem like it's coming from Southwest State within its own borders. It doesn't seem like it's coming from Beidaba itself. It seems as though there are individuals based in Hamar that have direct relations to the federal government or have relations to the ruling party in Mogadishu that are actively engaging by funding certain people in Beidaba. I mean, people are poor. They're giving somebody $20 to go do something they're willing to do because it feeds their family. That's the reality of Somalia. So, you know, that's what it seems to be. Now, if peace and stability is genuine from the opposition, if they really want to see a Southwest state that can be governed effectively and maintain the progress we've seen over the last four years, they must sit down for talks and accept the call of the state president of Afghanistan to end the current political quarrel in peace talks.